Yo, what's up, guys? It's Born to Do Joe. Welcome back to number three of Seven Days Podcast, where I talk about what happened within the past seven days. Well, today, um, well, let's see. Uh, WWE Raw was awful. SmackDown kicked ass. Uh, TNA going through some issues. Lucha Underground was great as always. And WWE 2K17 gameplay footage is out until the release, which is about uh, next Tuesday. Not this Tuesday, next Tuesday. So, let's talk about, let's see, let's, let's start with um, Monday Night Raw. Uh, Monday Night Raw was not that good. Um... I mean, to me, Monday Night Raw just feels the same. It's like the same shit. It's the same thing. Freaking Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Rusev, the Cruiserweights, and Stephanie McFoley. That's it. SmackDown, I feel like there's Slater and Rhino, American Alpha, Usos, um... You know, the hype bros, freaking Cruz a little bit, but Corbin a lot, Daniel Bryan, The Miz, Dolph Ziggler, John Cena, Ambrose, and AJ Styles at the top. So, those two shows, Rolf is the same old, same old crap. I don't care that it's three hours. If you're able to put on three hours uh, of a show um, at Backlash... And Class of Champions. Class of Champions was good, but it wasn't great. You know, like, Class of Champions last week was great. It was a good show. I was hyped for it. And, like, you know, the first match of the night, the tag team title match, that was good. It was a good match. I was hoping that, you know, Anderson and Gallows were going to win the tag team titles. They were so good. But, but, uh. It's just eh, the new day. I mean, fucking demolition's tag team record is 470 or maybe 400 to 440 to 470 days. Around there, that's the record for um, the demolition. But the new day is at 400 right now. So I honestly don't think. That the New Day is at that level to pass, you know, the demolition. I mean, not every record should be broken and have a new record. I don't think that because there's some that needs to stay and there's some that needs to uh, that needs to be done. I mean, I really I want someone to do the CM Punk of uh, 434 plus days as champion, but um, I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> Unless it's someone that we really, really like, like at a Daniel Bryan level, I don't think there's anyone else that um, we care about enough on Raw or SmackDown that we want to have to to be champion for. I mean, if AJ Styles can keep up being a heel for over 400 plus days, then he is definitely the best in the entire planet, no doubt. He is the best in the world right now. But he would be the best in the universe if he gets that done. If they actually book him right and they freaking let him hold the title for a long ass time, which I won't mind, then uh, yeah, you can see at a CM Punk level, best in the world. But um, Monday Night Raw, the women's division. Look, the 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 the, the division in but for for Raw and SmackDown. Uh, I'll just be honest. When I think of Raw's Women's Division, I feel like it's limited. And it is limited. It's fucking Sasha Banks, Bailey, Charlotte, repeat. More like tweet. Uh, no, watch, tweet, sleep, repeat. Watch, tweet, sleep, repeat. That's what I think. Because I love Bailey. I love Sasha. And I love Charlotte. I would smash all three of them. But the thing is. They're not that entertaining enough for me to want to see them every single week doing the same shit. I mean, I love 
AG Styles. You guys saw my reaction uh, from the Royal Rumble pay-per-view and the way how I acted and I marked out how AG Styles debuted. I marked, I legit lost my shit. And, and ever since then, I'm still in that phase where he's still in the WWE this long and he's he's doing fantastic you know you know like for Sasha Bailey I mean I AG Styles is might be that one person you know that like came from a different company and and, and comes in WWE that I want that I want to see him every single week because like I just don't see myself doing that for Bailey or Sasha Banks or Charlotte. Sasha Banks, unless she turns heel, she's just stale at this point. She's just coming out saying, I'm the boss, even though you're not really the boss. If you were the boss, show me that you're the boss. When I think of the boss, I think of Rick Ross, Biggie Smalls, Tupac, or, you know, Lita, Trish, you know, even Mae Young in her later years, you know, back, like, the Attitude Era, around there when she was just doing comedy stuff, entertaining us, she was still a badass even though she was at an old age. That's a boss. You, Sasha Banks, you know, if I ever meet you in person, I will not say this shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not gonna say that because then, then you'll get mad at me and shit and I don't want that, but, you know, I'm just saying this as a fan that I love Sasha Banks. It's just, I want her to be how she was back then and I'm this I'm speaking like this it's 5 14 a.m. in the morning and <laughs> I'm tired <laughs> I'm tired so I'm, I'm sorry if I speak like this but um yeah the yeah, Sasha Banks um, I want her to be the heel 2014 chasing the NXT women's title Sasha Banks where she comes out and she has bodyguards. She comes out in a nice Escalade looking car, vehicle, and she has four black body, or just four bodyguards, right? Just carrying her out of the vehicle, bringing her into the ring, you know, like shit like that. I need that, all right? I want that. Bailey, Bailey can stay. Bailey stayed how she is. I love Bailey. It's just that I I did not want to see her in a in a uh, squash match. I don't think that was necessary. I don't think Bailey is even worthy of a squash match. Well, I think a squash match. I think I think for someone that just debuted, like you know, that debuted for about at least four weeks before they meet a credible opponent. Now Bailey came up and she defeated Dana Brooke in her first uh, match, and she defeated Charlotte, I believe, the next week. And then she goes to um, Class of Champions in that triple threat. She got pinned. Um, now everybody's saying, "Oh, oh, I didn't like that." Uh, so uh, Bailey got pinned. If they if they made Sasha Banks take the pinfall, you do know that it would devalue Sasha Banks. You know when it comes to her championship title rematch because she was old a one on one rematch. It makes sense. I mean. Uh, Bailey right now she doesn't need a big win um, or she I mean she's not even buried uh, that's that's what I'm getting from people when they say oh I don't like how she's getting that she got pinned and stuff I mean yeah she got pinned to a big boo I get it but she had to take the she had to take the loss mainly because um, I mean Sasha Banks getting her rematch on Monday night tomorrow so it makes sense that um, Sasha Banks stay out of the equation of getting pinned. So then uh, when a rematch comes, it'll make her still look strong a little bit. Instead of being like, why is she getting a rematch? She just, she got, she got pinned at the pay-per-view. Why is she getting a rematch? Should be Bailey fighting Charlotte, you know? So I understand why they did that. And it makes kind of sense to me, at least. Um, if it makes sense to you, leave your comments down below. I'm not sure. But, um... Yeah, so Sasha Banks needs to turn heel badly. If she ever wins back that woman's title, she needs to turn on Bailey. Simple as that. All right, and the women's division on the Raw is just so awful. Nia Jax, I love every woman they have on Raw, but the thing is, 
they're only using them for a certain amount of time. They're only using some of them. Summary is injured, I heard. Paige, she she finishes crap she's doing with Del Rio and, 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 and WWE. So now she's back, but she's injured. So we have to wait. She might have to, she might have to take surgery, right? So, so we might not see her for uh, a while. Um... So we have Nia Jax on the main. So we have the Nia Jax, Alicia Fox, Bailey, Sasha, and Charlotte. That's five women available. If you add two, that's Paige and Summer Rae, but they're injured. So you have five active women on the roster. That is bad. And who are you gonna get from NXT? Peyton Royce, huh? Billy Kay. They're not ready yet. They need something to make them. At a, at a status where we care. You know, we, they can't be somewhere where, you know, it's just like, okay, hi, yeah, Billy Kay, uh, Peyton Royce, yay. That's it. Like, you know, like, um, hello? <laughs> like, who, who are you? Oh, Peyton Royce? Okay. What do you do? Oh, okay. You, you like to bring a flower in your entrance? Okay. Oh, Billy Kay, who, who are you? Oh, you're pretending like you're some, some evil goddess. Okay. Oh, okay. That, that I mean, your legs are long though. I mean, that that that's it. So you know what I mean. So, so they can't bring them up yet. Um, that one chick, Eva Marie version two, Amanda, uh, or Mandy, or whatever her fucking name is. She can't go nowhere yet. Uh, she gotta stay where she's at. Um, enough said about that. Uh, like, yeah, Ember Moon, she's winning the NXT Women's title eventually, so she's not going nowhere for now. Asuka, once she loses that Women's title, she's coming right up. She better go. I truly want her to go to SmackDown. I feel like she will do so much. She'll have classic matches with people on SmackDown more than Monday Night Raw because she already been through with Bayley. Uh, the only people she has not been through is Charlotte and Sasha Banks. And those, and she's also been with Nia Jax, but not with a Salisa Fox, not with uh, Sasha Banks and Charlotte. So three out of the five women on the roster, she's got to face them again and again and again, or maybe some local competitors. I don't want that shit. She deserves to be on Smack It Down Live because um, she will get more matches out of more people. And simple as that. I don't think she deserves to go to Raw because Raw, Raw is just awful. All right, simple as that. People give people give TNA more praises than Monday Night Raw. Simple as that. So Monday Night Raw. And by the way, the tag team titles were on the line, and Kofi Kingston was bleeding. I was like, oh shit, he looks like it, it's like if someone painted his face. You know, it looked that it looked that nasty. But um, him and Big E was able to retain the tag team titles, which I didn't like. Cause I'm like, wait a minute. So they had a rematch from the pay per view, and they retained it. Why? What was the point of that? If they were gonna retain the title anyway, why do it? Drawing in views for a title match, and having the title uh, retain. It's not going to work, all right? It's not going to work out at all. The fans are going to be like, okay, so the next time they do this shit, I'm not even going to watch because it's the same old, same old, you know? So I, I didn't like that at all, but, uh, well, what can you do? And what else happened on Raw? Nothing else. I think that's all that I care about, or at least no. I mean, Seth Rollins wanted to come out and fight, but uh, Big Foley was like, nope, nope, nope. You're injured. You can't go out, blah, blah, blah. The main event of Raw was just awful. I'm sorry. And I love all four of these people. But I did not agree with this at all. A SummerSlam beginning match. It was the opening match of SummerSlam. The pay-per-view. Not the kickoff show. The actual pay-per-view. Big, uh, Big Cass and Enzo against Y2J and the Universal Champion Kevin Owens. Are you kidding me? Seriously? No. No nah, man, no way. I don't. I don't. I don't like that at all. The segment was hilarious. I'll give you that. But the match, nobody give a fuck about. I know the presidential thing. Look, America's fucked. We all know it. Hashtag America is fucked. But um, 
yeah, uh, besides that, I mean, I'm glad that, I, I'm not surprised that nobody will watch it anyway, the fucking show was garbage, 1.75 rating, your bitch has to deserve it, man, I feel like, I feel like there's a difference, when it's raw, it's like Vince and Kevin Dunn are truly, like, running the, the show, like, they are the main people that the people that uh, the creative team have to go to and be like, yeah, this is what this is what we're gonna do. And after Vince is okay it, and then it's shitty, right? SmackDown, I feel like Triple H, Shane, and maybe even Road Dog himself is over there, and they're doing great shit over there. That's what I think, but I could be wrong. Vince and Kevin Dunn could be doing on both shows and. You know, just that SmackDown creative team has more better ideas than Raw, I guess. I don't know. So, um, so we go from Raw. Raw was garbage. Uh, I'm not going to rate it because it's not, my, not even worth my time to rate. SmackDown. Uh, SmackDown Live. Let's see. What do I remember from SmackDown? We had a, what was it? A 12-man tag? 10-man tag? Uh, eight, no. Yeah, a six man, 16 man tag, I think, right? Um... I think it was four teams. I think it, it was, I think it was Slater and Rhino, American Alpha, and the Hype Bros. All right, that's that's six people. Yeah, so twelve man tag around there. Um, I when I saw, it, I'm like, oh crap. Uh, cause I was thinking about JD from New York's reaction to that for a second. I was like, oh no, oh no, he's gonna, oh no. <laughs> Because WWE is so full of it when it comes to uh, 12-man tags. It's, like, unbelievable. But great reception. The fans loved it. People loved it on Twitter. It was great. So I'm like, okay, I guess it was great. I mean, that's, like, the one thing I'll, like, base other people's opinions on. Because to me, it's like, uh, okay, I mean... No point. I get it. There's a feud between the Usos and American Alpha. Maybe the hype rules included. Uh, and Slater and Rhino. I mean, I, I, I don't know if I agree with this or not. But uh, the Usos. One of the Usos. Jimmy or Jay. I think it's Jimmy. Because I don't see Jay doing it. Jimmy has that hammerlock style freaking uh, single leg Boston crap maneuver. I forgot what the move is called. Uh... Tequila Sunrise, that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Um, he had to lock in on Slater, and Slater tapped out. I'm like, they just made the tag champions tap out. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> so, I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like the Usos are not going to win the tag team titles, um, you know, next, uh, no, this Sunday. Like, seven days from now, this Sunday. I don't think... Uh, the, the Usos are going to win the tag titles. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, what else happened on SmackDown? If I, if I can remember. I'm trying to remember on the top of my head. Um, uh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, Styles and Dean Ambrose for the WWE title. Um, Styles, um, like, he, he gave Ambrose a high knee on the outside. And then he went over to John Cena and he punched him in the face. And then John Cena was so mad, he distracted the referee. Ambrose went for a dirty deeds or something, or a roll-up. He went for a roll-up, actually. He went for a roll-up, and after Ambrose uh, seeing the referee not counting, and after Ambrose went to Cena, and like Ambrose was like, what's going on? They're bickering back and forth. Ambrose hit Cena, I think, and then... Uh, and, and then after AJ got hit, and no, AJ uh, caught Ambrose with a roll-up, one, two, three. Pulled the pulled the trunks, the, almost the underwear of Ambrose. And freaking AJ Styles retained the WWE title, which I knew he would. I knew he was going to walk in there and retain. There's no way. There's no way that AJ's going to walk in there and lose. And then after fucking Ambrose gets back the title. I don't think so. I didn't mind Ambrose's title reign. It's just that later on, I was like, okay, this guy needs to lose. AJ Styles has to win. I don't give a fuck what anyone says. AJ Styles has to win. So, and, but the thing is, John Cena stand tall. John Cena would look good, actually. Uh, pause. <laughs> but, like, what I mean by that is, um, Cena dropped AJ and Dean Ambrose. So, 
within the past three weeks or four weeks, John Cena, AJ Styles, and Dean Ambrose have all stand tall at the end of SmackDown for the past three to four weeks. AJ Styles was first, and in the second week, Ambrose dropped Cena and uh, AJ, and now Cena dropped both, a both AJ and Dean Ambrose. So, I like that. I hope something creative happens on um, SmackDown this Tuesday. Maybe something like a tag team match where it's like, I, I don't know. Maybe like maybe we should do like Cena versus Ambrose rematch and AJ watches. I don't know. Something creative, something good. I feel like SmackDown is going to kick ass again this week. Obviously, I can't fucking watch it because I am at work. By the time I go home, uh, shit goes down. Um, I got more hours at work, so, um, I won't be able to watch Raw or SmackDown completely, so, <sighs> we'll see. Uh, so, we move on to Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground, I can't remember a lot. All I remember was, um, that I think it was Rey Mysterio's protege. Uh, I don't know his name. I thought it was Prince <laughs> He had the same mask as Prince Puma. You can't, you can't blame me. All right, if I only see, I see Prince Puma like once, and I'm like, okay, there you go. But um, he uh, yeah, Rey Mysterio's protege freaking won a match against Chavo Guerrero where he will meet um Pentagon Dark, and yeah, that looks shit. That shit looks lit. I saw the guy that used to be the World Heavyweight Champion used to stand, used to sit on some. Used to be on a high pedestal, you know what I mean? Like, he used to, like, he was sitting on, like, a throne. And he was, like, a king of the damn castle. All right, that big old guy. They used to be world champion. Had his arm broken up by Pentagon Jr. before. Um, yeah, that guy. Um, I saw him confronting, I think it was Cage. Um, I'm not sure. I could be wrong, but he confronted someone. Um, then we saw Mundo at PJ Black and that. Beautiful woman, that awesome woman. That woman, I swear, I don't know her name, but she is fantastic. She is, I said it last week, she is better than all of the, or all of Monday Night Raw's women combined. She's better than Sasha, she's better than Charlotte, she's better than Bailey, and she's better than Nia Jax, better than Alicia Fox. She's better than all five women of the Raw roster. Okay, that's how that's how good she is. All right, if she's able to hang with the dudes in the ring, you're a badass. Simple as that. That's the boss right there, Sasha Banks. But anyways, um, yeah, I mean they had a great tag team match. Uh, the goofball was in there too, and I think he got the pinfall. He did some unique roll up, and he was able to get the win for the team. I was like, oh shit, that was that was random. That was, like, out of nowhere. But um, I did skip through it because I was losing a little bit of interest. So I skipped through it because I can't really remember all of it. So, yeah. That's it for uh, Lucha Underground. Um, th Thursday night. Uh, Tuesday. Uh, fuck, sorry. Uh, TNA Impact. <sighs> Let's see. Maria Canales and Gil Kim. That's going to end uh, tonight at Slammiversary. I'm going to watch the pay-per-view after. When it's done, I have a website that I can watch. I don't know if I can watch it live. I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, uh, that's going to happen tonight at at uh, Bound for Glory. EC3 and Lashley, I can't wait for that match to come through. That match, is I'm actually hyped for that. It's like, okay, we have the badass in EC3, and we have the dominant badass in the World Heavyweight Champion, Lashley. So I want to see how those two are going to go at it, you know? It's like... It, it, it's like, um, I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. I can't really compare it to something, but it's 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 monumental for me. Now, the Grand Championship, I lost a lot of interest because I just can't. I, I, I personally love tournaments. It's just I don't like the beginning because the beginning, it takes forever. I just want to skip to the end. So that's so that's what I did for the Cruiserweight Classic. I watched some matches here and there. The one match that I caught on that I don't need to watch back and be like, holy shit, everyone else did this, everybody said this and all that. No. The one match in the Cruiserweight Classic I watched that was spot on, that I watched with everyone, like everyone else did, 
was Cedric versus Kota Ibushi. That match, Jesus Christ. I missed the Gargano and Ciampa match the week prior or two weeks prior. I missed that one, but I went back and watched it. Holy shit, that match was great. But, um, yeah, everything, I skipped until the end, and I'm like, okay, it's TJ Perkins versus Grand Metallic, and TJ Perkins with his dab, and, uh, and whatever that thing, you know, you know, he bumps his fist, and then he does the bam thing, uh, you know, that shit, so, yeah, so, uh, I, I mean, Rich Swan. uh, pause, though, while I'm just, what I'm doing, sorry, but, like, Rich Swan, Cedric, Brian Kendrick, and TJ, and all these guys are just so good. Now, I think Kota Ibushi is going to finish up what he has to do, and then he'll come back to WWE. He's in that Tag Team Classic, the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic, the Glorious 10, and Bobby Roode, and, and uh, Ty Dillinger, the Canadians... The Canadians are are teaming up to come home in Toronto and win that tattoo classic. I will do whatever it takes to get that to get those tickets. I'm serious. Um, I don't have them yet. I should have them, but every time I plan on getting something, there's something in my way to block me from getting it. So it is what it is. Um. Yeah, um, it's just, yeah, so TNA, uh, what else, what else is there? Fuck. Um, Moose versus Mike Bennett, that would be a good one. I, I actually will enjoy that because Mike Bennett is a douchebag. And I like, you know, Moose, come on, come on. Every time he comes out, you know, you just got to do the Moose. And then the Moose. Moose, you know, all that shit. You just got to. You just got to. And then the the Great War. Brother Nero. Rebby. Decay. And then it's like the Hardys. It's, it's the Broken Brilliance and Brother Nero. We have the Broken Hardys against Decay. DK 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 you know so yeah um I mean their their final deletion DK delete or DK fight that was so good I enjoyed that one I enjoyed both the first the final deletion and that one oh my god that one was good but um yeah what else is there? What else is on the card? I can't remember. Uh, and, and I keep hearing this story about TNA about to go out of business. Uh, you know, fucking, you know, WWE some talks with TNA about to buy them out and stuff. Look, me, honestly, I don't give a fuck. If TNA is still alive, then TNA is still alive. If TNA goes away because of WWE, then that's it. Then the people I barely care about at all will go to a different company. And the people I do care about most likely will be in WWE. EC3, Galloway, maybe Aaron Rex or, you know, Lashley, um, you know, stuff. People like that. Hardys, obviously. So, yeah. Uh, so, TNA, I hope the best for you. I, I just hope. You know, I just feel like Billy Corgan should be the one to take charge. I and and don't give me bullshit. Oh, but oh, so she's a woman. So so because you know a woman should not be in charge. But no, no, no. I'm not looking at it at all. It's just people are giving Dixie Carter shit, and I think that if you're gonna keep getting this bad press, you should step down. Because seriously. There's no point of you trying to fight it. You've been fighting it for a decade now and a half or maybe more than that. You should seriously just be like, all right, I'm done. I'm done. I resign. I'm no longer a TNA. Billy Corgan, here you go. Here's the company that I kind of made made it good, you know, made it famous, you know, stuff like that. You know, I, I just feel like Billy Corgan is the right dude. I feel like a, a new face. I feel like he knows what he's doing when it comes to... Uh, the TNA and, and his day to day operations, so I, I I think he should be running TNA. That's just me. 
And the last thing I want to talk about before I go, WWE 2K17, the footages I've seen to my my favorite WWE YouTuber when it comes to stuff like this, CM Pulse. All right, he's my number one. Uh, he's my first WWE uh, chant like channel ever. Like he's the first one. Second one, I would say Brendan plays because universe mode. I was looking for universe mode videos, and he was the one that showed up. And then bam, that's how I found Brendan plays. Um, so yeah, CM Pulse is just overall my favorite WWE guy. But, like, when it comes to universe mode, Brendan plays. You can't match him. You just can't. You know, so, let's see. the. F and I, 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 I'm not knocking on Luigi or Dank Ops or Tubby. I watch their videos. I'm subscribed to them, too. I, I, I watch their videos. Willpower, too. I watch their videos, and I see what they've done and stuff. Once I see one, I'm not going to watch the rest because there's no point, you know. You know, shit like that. I mean, when I, I just, the only thing I care about when they upload videos like that, you know, is the creation suite for arenas and entrances and, you know, create a championship. I can't wait for that one soon. And, well, I think that's it. Uh, the match types, I care about that one, but they didn't really change. The match type didn't really change. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. I mean... That's all the stuff I care about. I don't care about creative superstar. I know that's gonna be good anyways. I just feel like you know, that's like the least of my problems. Creative superstar. I mean, I like the 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 roster that they have, so there's no point in me creating any superstars. Um Yeah. I just Yeah, I just I just no point. Uh what else? What else is there? I mean, just create arena. I saw the footage of um, that trailer. I honestly can't wait for that. I just, I want to fuck around. Trust me, guys. The second I get home from work, man, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a quote Jack Swagger. It's going to be lit, man. Oh, I'm going to be a big problem on YouTube, man. A big problem. Oh, God. Swagger's promo was so cringe. But, um, yeah. <sighs> Uh, 2K17, I seen the My Career, I seen the My Career, uh, uh, a trailer, of Paul Heyman, that was so awesome, I was like, okay, I have to do a My Career, uh, shit this year, and I hope a lot of people will watch it more than, the, than last year's My Career, it took a while for me to get some good views on my, my career last year, but, um, yeah, uh, I, I'm done with My Career in 2K16, I wanna finish it, like, I want to retire and stuff, but I'm just, I don't think I have the energy for that shit, you know? So, I was like, you know what? I'm going to end it off there. WrestleMania is the last one. I don't think I uploaded yet, so I'm not going to spoil it now. Um, I might upload it this week coming up because I have it saved. Uh, I didn't upload it yet. But, um, yeah, that's basically it of the past week. Nothing else happened on Friday. Nothing important. Uh, yeah. I think that's it. You know, Monday to Thursday. I might as well call it four days podcast. We got nothing else to talk about on um, Friday and yesterday, Saturday. So, but, um, yeah, guys, that's it for the podcast. If you guys can, I don't know if this is, this qualifies to be a podcast or not. This is kind of like a wrestling podcast, basically, because I talk about wrestling. I don't even talk about anything else besides like what's going on with me personally. But uh, everything else outside, like, you know, shootings and all this stuff, I don't really care. I'm not in that bubble. I'm in my bubble, my comfort zone. So that's why I always talk about things that make me comfortable, shit like that. So thank you guys for listening slash watching. And, yes, I changed up the scenery because, well, you know, I got a laptop. I got a gaming capture and everything. Everything's fine here on uh for YouTube, for my YouTube channel, so hopefully I have improved, uh, I might sound super weird on this microphone, um, but yeah, guys, if you guys can leave a like on this video, and subscribe now for more, should I put this on iTunes and shit, nah, I don't think so, I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet, so, um, yeah, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, at boy one three jam leave your comments down below what you guys think, and I'll see you guys next time, alright, guys, enjoy